Unit 10, electricity, largely covers, you know, electric forces, electric flow, the flow of electrons through a wire to generate current, and therefore voltage. Um, the first topic that we start out with is, let's say we have two point charged particles, and let's say that this charged particle has a charge of plus three, and this charged particle has a charge of one minus. Uh, electrical forces and electrical fields refer to phenomenons in which, you know, there's forces of attraction or repulsion um, between different particles that you would encounter in nature. In this case, when we generate an electric field, for these two particles, it probably looks something like this. There we go. Drawing a lot of vector arrows from this positively charged vector, maybe perhaps less arrows for that negatively charged vector because of differences in charge. Whenever the vector arrow can't quite reach the next particle, we would say that it's drawn to infinity. Okay, so that's electrical charge. Uh, there's an electrical force between these two particles generated, an electrical force. And we can measure that electrical force between two charged particles uh, using the, the equation Coulomb's law. very reminiscent of Newton's universal law of gravitation, the equation looks like this. Okay, so you have your electrical force, your constant. Qs refer to the electrical charge on each of those particles. Electrical charge is a, a unit which is measured in coulombs, that's the SI unit for them. You'll notice that mass of particles is not a factor in calculating electrical force, but rather the strength of the electrical charges themselves. And you have your standard issue distance between the two particles squared. This refers to the center, distance of the center of mass of the two particles squared. Not Sometimes it's presented as a radius or a R value there. R just still means the distance between the two particles squared. And then you can use this equation in a variety of circumstances to solve for whichever variable you happen to be solving for. So that's just kind of a basic quick uh, look at electrostatics. But the majority of unit 10, I'll be honest, uh, concerns circuits and that sort of stuff. Let's draw a quick circuit diagram. This is a pretty generic looking, uh, what's known as a series circuit. So let's throw that down as series. Um, and there's a few, there's three different main uh, variables that we look at, at with circuits. There you have potential difference, otherwise known as voltage. You have current, which refers to the flow of electrons, which is measured in amps. So voltage is measured in voltage. Current is measured in amps. And you have resistance, which is measured in ohms. That's the symbol for ohms right there. We'll start with voltage. And to explain voltage, it's best to think about the flow of electrons through our circuit as water. You know, water flowing, you know, using hydroelectric power to power a thing. You can think of your resistors, which we know will be there, are light bulbs, essentially, for most of our labs, harnessing the flow of electrons to do a thing as positions in which we harness that flow of water to do a thing. And then you can think about voltage as the pressure that pushes the water through that system. Now this analogy doesn't hold up 1000% of the time, but it is a good way to think about the system. Whether you have a six volt battery or a 12 volt battery, or whatever the voltage is, potential difference would basically be a measure in millimeters of mercury or perhaps pascals of the water pressure pushing through that system. So that's voltage. Uh, let's go ahead and say that we have a 6-volt battery for this particular diagram. All right, the next one we'll take on is resistors. Resistors refer to objects which harness the flow of electricity to do a thing. So if an object had, let's say, 100 ohms, and another object had, say, 50 ohms, then it would go to show that this object perhaps has more resistance, and this object has less resistance in it. It impedes the flow of electricity at differing rates. Finally, we have the measure of current. Current being the, uh, I guess one way to phrase current is, a weird way of saying is the amount of electrons flowing through the system. I guess in regards to our, na our analogy, it would be the liters of water that flow through this pipe or, or, you know, whatever, what have you. So we don't know what the current is for this particular um, diagram, but we'll just say current over here and it'll be measured in amps when we solve for it. And in order to solve for it, we'll first discuss a few rules for series circuits. Uh, one, the current, 
we have total is equal to the current across resistor one, which is equal to the current across resistor two. What we're communicating by saying that is that all the electrons which leave the battery are accounted for and present when those electrons come back to the battery over here. Um, we don't lose that on any electrons. It's not something some students have the, uh, the, the weird way of thinking about it, that it's the dissipation of the electrons from the light bulb that lights it up. That's not correct. All the electrons which leave do, in fact, come back. The total voltage is equal to, and then we've got to bring up this topic of potential difference or voltage drop. Potential difference or voltage drop. Another way to phrase the word voltage would be potential difference. So if you see that on a test quiz or homework problem, potential difference and voltage mean essentially the same thing. Um, the rate at which voltage drops, what we mean is that there's this pressure that's pushing these electrons out is going to be a certain number here. And it gets dropped as it goes across each resistor. And what these refer to is the rate at which we have lost water pressure or electron pressure as a result of going across these resistors. Finally, you have your resistance. Very good. So the way to approach problems like this, step one is to figure out what your total resistance is. That's always going to be step one. Figure out what your total resistance is. Total resistance in this case is equal to 150 ohms. Your total voltage we established oh, is six. Total voltage is six volts. So our total current in this particular circuit is equal to 0 0.04 amps. Now, that's also known as uh, 40 milliamps. And you're going to see this often when you use multimeters and lab stuff like, like milliamps because current values that we measure and frequently use in electronics are pretty small numbers. So it's okay to come across a number of 0 0.008 and that sort of a thing. Finally, we can figure out what our potential difference or voltage drop is across each resistor. And that would be the conclusion to any sort of generic series problem. In order to do that, we have to bring up this topic over here, which I'm going to write over here on this footnote, and that's Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law, we have used it earlier in this problem. I'm sorry I didn't get, go into it earlier, but it's basically what I would term the Ver triangle. Voltage is proportional to current and resistance, as outlined here. Using Ohm's Law to solve for potential difference across resistor 1, We would figure that out by saying that our current was equal to 0 0.04 and our resistance of resistor 1 is 100. Voltage drop for resistor 1 is equal to 4 volts. Figuring out our potential difference or voltage drop across resistor 2. Voltage drop or potential difference across resistor 2 is equal to 0 0.04, keeping our current constant. That resistance of resistor 2 is 50 ohms. That would be 2 volts. And if you notice, you can make sure that you did this problem right by saying, OK, so 4 plus 2 equals 6. Ah, yes, I am in keeping with everything that goes correctly because this 6 volts must be dissipated across both resistors. And a way of thinking about it as far as our analogy goes, still from the water, we've lost 4 volts of pressure here. So we have 2 volts of pressure left over. We lose out on 2 volts of pressure here. We have barely any pressure left over. Maybe like 0 0.000001 volt of pressure bringing our electrons back to the battery. That's not entirely descriptive of what's happening here, but it's a good analogy to keep up with what's going on in these electrical circuit problems as electrons make their way back into the battery.